Chequemus Centre is a place that has been part of the school district's culture for about 50 years now. It's essentially an outdoor education centre uh, for environmental learning. We've got a number of facilities here and most kids during their time at school will visit here two or three times and uh, get a, a wide range of experiences. The first time I visited the site I just looked around and couldn't believe that this was somehow a school district property. And to think that back in the 60s the school district had enough foresight to, to acquire this piece of land and partner it with others and just turn it into this magical place that it is. I think one of the amazing things about this place is that there are so many people being influenced by it. We're seeing parents on open day that stayed here as children and they're now showing their kids around the site and the kids are so happy to be here and showing their parents where they're, where they're going to stay or where they have stayed. One of the challenges we do have with such a large site and so many buildings is, is maintaining the buildings to a, to a high standard. So that's where the cabin project was such a great opportunity for us, taking an older building and being able to do something with it that benefits the students and also benefits the centre in terms of reducing energy cost and piloting out some interesting technologies for potential use in the rest of our schools in North Vancouver. I work at BCIT in our Zero Emission Building Education Centre and what we do there is we work on developing hands-on training for industry to come in and learn about high performance construction uh, techniques and new materials and, and solutions. The planning process was a really important part of this project. Uh, we got a really good team of people together who were willing to come and invest in that upfront planning and design stage. That's where we made all the important decisions about the project that's allowed it to be a success. We had discovered that the existing wood pilings uh, were significantly rotted. So what we've done is we've uh, gone back in, we've re-supported all the cabins, leveled them out. For the walls, we completed an exterior insulation strategy so that we didn't take away any of the interior square footage of the building or affect the heritage finishes inside. Uh, on three walls, we used a Neopore uh, rigid foam insulation four inches thick, wrapping the outside after caulking any holes around the exterior of the structure. And on the third wall, we used Gutex, it's a wood fiber board insulation, uh, two inches of thickness of that to achieve a, a complete wrap around the building. Uh, a new sweater, so you could say. And then on top of the insulation, we installed an airtight membrane, uh, which was made airtight. It's a, a detailed taping strategy, making sure that we were able to connect it to the roof and connect it to the wrap around the foundation. We've used a different type of insulation on the front of the building. This is a, a wood fiber insulation made by Gutex. It's a European product. Some of the key advantages to using Gutex is a wood fiber, so it's a natural material. Uh, it can be composted at the end of its life cycle. And one of the reasons that the industry really likes a wood fiber insulation like this is it actually uh, breathes better, so uh, moisture has an ability to move back and forth uh, inside the material in a way that's different than some of the other plastic type materials that um, you might choose. Insulating the roof started from the exterior with a loose fill insulation, which was sheep's wool insulation provided by Havlock Wool. And some of the advantages of using this natural wool insulation uh, are that it's easier for the guys to work with. It has uh, improved sound performance capabilities over the fiberglass that was in there. Uh, and if it ever gets wet, it'll dry out and return to its original performance values. So the windows were donated by Cascadia Windows and they've donated passive house windows. So these are the highest performance windows available on the market. They are going to make a huge difference in terms of comfort in the winter in these buildings and air tightness because they're a triple glazed window, gas filled, and they have a very high performance window frame. BCIT spent uh, a couple months tracking data, uh, air quality data, temperature data from the cabins while they were in use before any of the projects started. So it was really interesting. We're able to have a baseline understanding of comfort conditions and air quality in the cabins, and then we'll be able to continue tracking that uh, ongoing in the future. So we're trying to measure how much air leakage is coming through the building, through cracks in the walls, around windows, under doors, uh, because that's where we're losing energy. And we've achieved a, a performance improvement, uh, about a threefold performance improvement in, air, in reducing our air leakage. When you create a more airtight building, you end up needing to make sure that you're getting adequate ventilation air to the occupants in that building. The HRVs installed in this building are a LUNOS unit, and so they're a really unique uh, system because they're actually mounted directly through the wall. So one of them's pulling air in while the other one's exhausting, and then they switch. 
The exterior cladding, we're using a cedar siding because it's a local product and it maintains the desired aesthetic. The cabins are much uh, warmer, better insulated, they're not as drafty, so in the winter time we'll find that people are a lot warmer in their beds at night, they're much more comfortable and you've got a constant supply of fresh air. From BCIT's perspective, this project is a great place for us to collect data on a before and after scenario, be able to explain the value of high performance construction, be able to document and explain exactly how the construction process will change in a renovation project. So what this project has shown us is with a little bit of extra effort and money, you can make significant gains towards zero energy buildings. And that extra money will pay off in terms of operating savings, long-term durability of the buildings, uh, and occupant comfort. The North End School District is really, really grateful to everyone that's helped out on this project. And it was amazing to see a lot of the manufacturers and suppliers come to the table with very generous donations. And the level of support we received really speaks to the, the potential that everyone saw on the site. And I myself take any opportunity to get up here and just be part of the magic place. And, and I think everyone that was involved in the project also felt the same way. So yeah, once again, huge thanks to everyone that helped out with this project.